Okay. <clears throat> Alrighty, so I'm gonna try and give you a, a short video. We'll try and keep it under 10 minutes, so I'm not gonna say anything that I don't need to say. Um, as far as ink goes, um, this is kind of the the calligrapher's standard, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, and uh, most calligraphers will use this. Uh, and I think you can get it at, like Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that. But um, <laughs> you can see mine's all dried out. But uh, all you do is just take out a little bit and, and put it into a little cup. Um, I wouldn't really mix it in here because if you get some kind of dirty water in it, then it, it, it'll change the color of the whole bottle. What I'm gonna do actually though is, and this is what I usually recommend, um, is just to use gouache. Oh, okay, maybe you can, I guess, not gonna be able to see that. Gouache, um, this one is a whole beans gouache, and this one is a Windsor and Newton. This is a whole bean acrylic gouache, but I don't really use acrylic gouache too much. Um, it's a little bit better so that when it dries, it's not gonna be, like you won't be able to smear it with any kind of water. So if, if you're afraid of getting some water damage on it, then you could use ac acrylic gouache, but most of the time just regular gouache works great. And then um, you can get these little small bottles. If you go to an art shop, you don't have to get a big pack of, you know, $50 pack of them. You can just get a one tube if you go to an art store. So I'm going to mix a little bit right here. Um, I haven't mixed any in a while. I'm just going to use some of this whole beans. This is my uh, Windsor Newton's almost out. So I'm just going to put some in there and then I'm um, not sure how much I have in there. Since I've used a gouache before I kind of know the consistency that I want. You can have a thick consistency or you can have a thin consistency. And um, I err on the side of thin because if it's really thick then when you lay it down on the paper and it dries that there's gonna be a little mound on it kind of a bump and um, if you rub your fingers across it you might smear the ink so if it's thin um, it's gonna lay really really flat against the paper and you're not gonna easily destroy what you've written uh, however you might lose some of the opacity so it might not be as white so you kind of have to find a balance so I'm just gonna put in I don't know I just use a dropper and kind of <laughs> I, I, I've never some people try to say milk consistency and all that kind of things it never makes sense to me I just I just mix it and then I put it on my pen and um, after I get it on my pen then I can get some test paper and uh, try it out so um, you know I, people say when it looks like half and half or cream or something like that but <laughs> I have no idea what those kind of things. I can't tell the difference between cream and half and full and zero and two percent and three percent and forty-four percent. So, um, okay. So I've got a little brush here and I've got my my ink. I'm gonna set that right there. As far as the pen goes, uh, nothing special. Just an oblique, an old old pen, old hood I've got. And then um, of course I've got tons and tons of nibs. A lot of these are rusty. Um, I honestly don't change my nibs. I don't really throw away my nibs too often. I'll throw away my nibs when they actually break. <laughs> um, otherwise, an old nib will have a more blunt edge. It's not that they go bad, but they'll have a blunt edge. Um, and you can actually re-sharpen it if you have a sharpening stone. Um, but um, you can use it for different projects and stuff. So um, I don't throw mine away because depending on the purpose, you might want a sharp edge nib and you might want a really blunt one so not sure what nib you're using um, I'm gonna use this it's called a blue pumpkin pretty cheap nib it's not a very sharp nib a lot of the um, a lot of calligraphy is about finding the right combination of of nibs because if you have if your nib is too sharp it's gonna catch you know if I drag my nib up and it's gonna and splatter everywhere uh, if your ink is not, uh, if your ink really runs really bad, um, or it doesn't hold very well, then uh, it's not gonna do much. And then um, if your paper, if your paper is, oh, if it's really bad, just printer paper, the ink is gonna bleed everywhere. Well, ink, of course, will bleed everywhere. Gouache is gonna be better than that. Um, gouache will tend to stay on the surface of the paper a little bit easier. So that's why I would recommend um, gouache, or this Bleed Proof Martins, which is pretty easy to get. Um, Okay, so, so your nib, uh, you'll want to make sure to clean your nib or just run a lighter on it or something because what's going to happen is you'll, you'll see, I'm going to put some, 
put some ink on here. As you can see, the, the, the ink just kind of blobs on there. I don't know if I've used this nib before. I might not have ever used this nib before. So it's just going to kind of blob on there, which is really weird. Um, so there might be some film. Well, I've already got some white ink there. Um, okay, as far as uh, ruling your paper, I have a light box, which allows me to see through the paper. But if you don't have that, then you'll want to use uh, some pencil lines. I recommend with calligraphy, um, if, it's your, if you're doing it, just to write things in pencil first. Uh, the slower you write, the better it looks in almost all cases in calligraphy. In almost every instance, script, whatever it is, uh, the slower the better. So if you do it first in, in pencil, you can write it a little bit faster, and then when you go by the pen, you don't have to think about making letters. You can just trace the letters, and I think that's a lot better with especially if you're beginning, because then you don't have to think about pressure and angle and how you're holding your pen and all that. You just trace the letters. So uh, you can, what I would recommend is if you're doing many letters, just to print out a piece of cardstock um, that looks, uh, that's just like the envelope. And then uh, you can cut out some, some lines and then you can just and then put the piece of paper over and and do that over and over. Um, also, one thing you need to be mindful of is to put just a, a blank piece of paper inside. Uh, otherwise, when you're placing some pressure on it, um, you don't mark through to the other side uh, or bleed through to the other side. Okay, so I'm just going to put down a line there. Sorry if the shadow is getting through. I don't know. Maybe you can see that line there. Um, well, with let wedding with wedding envelopes um, and addressing envelopes, you'll there's styles of formatting, you know, in terms of where do you put the name? Do you put the name towards the top or towards the middle or do you have the layout towards the bottom? And um, of course you can you can find all that information online, so I'm not going to go by that. I saw the example that you had is modern calligraphy. Um, surprisingly, it's one of the only things I've never practiced or written, so um, not something I'm very comfortable with doing, but I'll just do an example here. Um, what name shall I write? I'm going to Write a random name, Michael. Uh, so let's see. I'm not gonna go too fancy, but I want that M to look nice. And then I'm just gonna make my letters bounce. Michael, well, now Michael's all in the middle, so I'm gonna just put a last letter. <laughs> I didn't even think about what the last name was gonna be. So you should probably think about how much spacing, <clears throat> how big the letters are going to be and all that. Michael, uh, let's say, Michael P. Okay, so there's Michael P. Alrighty, so now I'm going to go ahead and write this down. So I've got my ink here. I'm going to put some on that. Get your blank paper. Let's see, there's some blank paper here. And, uh, well, my ink is not coming out. Okay, so partially because I think it's a new nib, but I'm going to go ahead and add some more water. Okay, so just do two drops at a time. Add a little bit of water. I'm not a very careful person when I do calligraphy. I've added a little bit more water and now it's coming out. Okay, if I just lightly press, it's making some lines. If I press down really really hard, it looks pretty thick to me. Um, because when I add some of that ink, if I write a, a small line, it doesn't come out very smooth. And if I write a bold line, a really thick line, it'll come out, but it it's raised on the paper really, really high. So I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna add two more drops, maybe three more drops, I don't know. And then, um, I think that'll be good. Okay, I, I, I couldn't tell you what the consistency is. It just, it's just gouache, okay? So, bum, ba -dum, put some more ink on there. Okay, yeah, there we go. Now when I put a line down, so it'll raise, but when it dries, it's gonna dry a little bit easier. And you can see it's, it's pretty opaque. I mean, this is some yellow paper and it's, it's putting an opaque line down, okay? Uh, well, let me write a letter first. So if you use a pencil, write it, I wrote it really 
a really hard line right here because uh, that way you can see it. But I would use like a 0.3 or 0.5 pencil, make sure it's really, really sharp, and then just lightly draw on it. Um, and that way when you cover your line with the ink, then uh, you don't have to worry um, about the line showing through, okay? So I'm just gonna follow this uh, pencil line that I placed down. And, um, okay, when I go through this upstroke here, it's not, I'm not uh, getting a line, so I might have to add more water, but the line is already looking pretty, hmm, thin strokes are looking pretty, uh, they're not very opaque, so I might have to add more ink, okay, so I'm gonna, um, but, um, just gonna pretty quickly now. Okay. Yep. So when I'm going on those upstrokes, um, my ink is not flowing very well, and the line is not very opaque. So I might have to go up, and then I might have to trace back with a downstroke, you know, just to fill in those lines. I think my ink is too watery now. I'm getting opaque lines in the thick spots, but not in the thin, not in the thin hair lines. Okay. So there's as much experimenting and, and testing. I'm really surprised by the way the wash is handling this paper because it's a very just a copy store envelope okay that line is really not showing up on the paper and um, on those thin lines if I go over the pencil line the pencil line kind of shows through so uh, you can make your ink a little bit thicker and then um, you know do one card and see when it dries is it is it really raised there this was you know, it wasn't dried all the way so don't do that. <laughs> um, this was a uh, permanent white from Holbein. And um, like I said, you might give the a, a PH Martins a try, okay? So that's how I would do that, um, is, is going through with those, with those pencil lines. And then once that's dried, uh, you can go, go by with a soft eraser, a kneaded eraser or something like that. Um, however you wanna do that, just be careful uh, you know, do one envelope <laughs> and let it dry and then go back and erase the lines because if you do a bunch of envelopes and then you try to go back and erase the lines and you had, your ink was too thick and the ink was really, the gouache was really raised on the paper and you go back over with an eraser, everything's just going to look ruined. So, um, do one, do one, do one first and let it dry and uh, get your feet wet, okay?